Listening to your goals and dreams is our top priority at West Tennessee Bank. Benefit from our more than 100 years of experience and visit our Henderson branch today. West Tennessee Bank, focused on you. West Tennessee Bank is a division of Decatur County Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Okay. First item on the agenda are the minutes. Is there any uh, corrections or any amendments to the minutes? I had a question on page 18. <clears throat> in the second full paragraph. Uh, I think there's a there. I think the Jesus may be off of stating. Uh, it looks like a full paragraph. Yeah. Uh, they added verbiage stating. Just a fair number. 
They are that's dead. taking them down and they have to haul them off. Uh -huh. okay. There's nowhere in Chester County to put that type of scrap anymore. Yeah. So they're either having to take it to Jackson to a certified landfill mm -hmm. and pay for getting them hauled up there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can have somebody ask me about that too. Yeah. So the only one I know right now that is kind of being done by an officer is Eagle Street. There's these people in the office on Eagle Street, and that's what we like to see. We like to say the owners are modest because the city doesn't have money tied up, and then it turns around and goes to a tax sale. And then at the end of the tax sale, the property don't break what the demolition costs. I agree. Yeah. 
we decided it was too big. So they are the ones that actually recommended to pull us back down to 15 miles. Uh, okay, so the first one is 80. Yes. And this one the department is Yeah, the department heads have to live inside Chester County and within 55 miles of city limits. Whereas the remainder of the boys is 15 miles or within Chester County, one of those, whichever. Just make sure mm -hmm. they understand. Yeah. Okay, so that was the first picture. Part-time employees is looked at on a case-by-case -case basis and on the department situation. So we have some places over there. The other big items that were discussed, uh, I want to mention we discussed selling vacation days for the first time. We, you know, anybody that has unused vacation days that they're going to lose or roll sick leave, it's going to allow them to sell what we call about 80 hours in any calendar year. Well, Brent called this, and I didn't get it, but he said it, but then when I looked at it, I called it again, thinking what he said. We can have somebody double up the same budget here, which makes it hard to budget, because somebody can sell 160 hours in one budget year. So when I got doing budgets, I got looking at it and things all way. And so we changed the wording to say 80 hours in any budget year. They still sell the 80 hours, it's still the same, it's just the start and end points different. So if somebody could, they still sell, Technically, they sell 80 hours in April yeah. and 80 hours in October in the same calendar year, but it's in two different budgets. So it's easier to budget for our budgeting purposes. And what, what do uh, The vacation is, it is section 4222. The part about selling vacation days starts at the bottom of page 9. The last paragraph goes over to page 10. Mm -hmm. That's where it talks about the rules to sell. You've got to take at least 40 hours of vacation in order to sell. You've got to keep at least 160 hours of vacation after you sell. And they are sold in full day increase. And we're only going to pay for them twice a year, April and October. And we will not be doing it this April. We don't have time to do it. So really, it'll be October will be the first time. It'll be next budget year when they can do it the first time. They sell all 80 hours of milk in October. Okay, the only other big thing I wanted to mention is the hearing board. There was a discussion at the last meeting about the hearing board. I think the board agreed that we needed to have a different hearing board than the city council to hear complaints and grievances and terminations and suspensions. And the decision was made to have a committee of the department heads on that board and one randomly chosen member of the city board and that will be randomly chosen that was recommended the last meeting the chief Ryan, and so that's the way this works and later i was sort of agree with that so that is hearing and then the the city hearing board is page 16 at the bottom so you have five department heads you have one city hall that will serve on that board itself if it's coming from a certain department that department head will have a vote during that session so depending on which department head so person comes to the fire department they have a vote that night so the remaining five members will vote and make a decision hearing board's decisions are final it does not come back to you there's no appeals back to the city council any other questions about anything that through the whole policy so i know we we tweak a little a bunch of little things but those were the big items I want to mention. The travel policy, we did discuss the travel policy about when you know, they have to be approved. Uh, it does give the option to the department head of the mayor to allow someone to take a personal car and pay full mileage. That was discussed last meeting. Uh, so that's basically the majority of what that does. And the travel policy, we only amended the three sections that we changed, whereas the personnel policy is the entire section. Right. So, in your package. So you need a motion? Yes, I do. Okay. Just by the importance of the agreement. Absolutely. Um, I make the motion that we accept this personnel policy changes as we discussed tonight and discussed last month in our work session. Motion to approve the personnel policy on the first reading. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing that I broke my vote. Well, Mr. Barber? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Butler? Yes. Mr. Ferris? 
Yes, Mr. Bannon. Yes. All those in favor? It's as if you now have a motion for the second reading. So move. Have a motion for the second reading. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second in discussion. Seeing none, roll call vote. Yes. Barber? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Ferris? Yes. Mr. Bannon? Yes. All voted in favor. Four to pass. Next up, next item is considered the resolution of the per diem rates for the meals and miles, Jim. As discussed also in the same committee meeting, we discussed it's been here since we uh, updated our standard mileage and meal rates. And there's a resolution in your packet that does that. These have always been set by resolution. The personnel policy and travel policy refers to a resolution to set the actual per diem rates. Well, that's the reason it's being done this way. Uh, the mileage rate is going from 47 cents to 55 cents per mile, but still below the federal rate. The mileage for driving is 55 cents, well, 55 cents mile is what we're talking about. If they choose to pay the personal vehicle and don't have a special exemption we talked about, they get 28 cents a mile. And then meals and incidentals are increasing from $45 a day to $55 a day. So your approval and motion on that resolution. So the motion approved or have a second. Have a second the discussion on the motion. See another vote. Mr. Phelps? Yes. Mr. Barber? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Ferris? Yes. Mr. Mayans? Yes. All voted in favor. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Uh, in the work session, if you remember, we, we discussed this. Our current policy is six miles from the city uh, limits as the road goes. Uh, to be more competitive in our profession, I would like to uh, amend that to 10 mile radius of city hall. I also want to, to uh, grandfather one of our friends who's three tenths of a mile over the way the crow flies. So I'd like, I'd like all of all to be able to take the point on and then provide it.
I'm sure you'll have to check make sure they have all the property insurance yeah. and everything. So I can do this and authorize. I'll, I'll make a motion that we authorize the mayor to accept the best of the vote. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. The only discussion I have on it is to ask Jim that the no bids come in to email you those bids. If anything pops a red flag to y'all, please contact Jim. Because we will immediately, we will not immediately want to be in. Check, check make sure everything's okay. We'll, we'll email you that information. So, since a red flag for somebody, please contact Jim. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say bye bye. Aye. Opposing, none, none. I'm giving you a, a city, a police department SOP. Yeah, I think Keith already picked this up in the office. Uh, review this, the top page shows the changes. It was in it, I was pretty draw a new one. The changes that were made, it's really housekeeping stuff. Uh, nothing really major to change, but look at it. The next board meeting, if you have any questions, between now and next board meeting, let me know. We'll talk about it or whatever, but next board meeting, I'll ask you that question. An update on the uh, AMR project. Uh, we did have some issues with some of the meters. We looked at the total number of meters, residential meters installed was like 3,898. Of that, we identified some 56 that were uh, not registered you know, because of the, uh, the way they were installed by the contractor. They did come back in and uh, take care of the situation with the meters they had, but that had about 300 and Right, 3,998. That's about one percent of the number of meters. So it's still a, still a very low number. Uh, we did identify a number of meters that didn't have any consumption. We've gone back and looked at a lot of those. We've got um, like uh, 27 dead meters out in the system, in which the meters need to be replaced. So I'd like uh, uh, permission to buy another 75 residential gas meters that cost would be like seven thousand three hundred and fifty dollars to get you know the meter kind of back in line and just for your information looking back uh, every year at the end of the year prior to our gas inspection i do the uh, gas loss based on how much gas we buy based on how much gas that we actually sell uh, through the meters and in uh, you know, in 2000, uh, 2016, we had like a 16.66 percent loss, and we immediately identified that to a um, ad register on a, on a very large meter, and we were able to uh, recover most of or a lot of that money. And in the following year, with the creation of the industrial route and putting the commercials and somebody actually looking at those and starting a good meter testing program for large meters. We dropped that in 2017 to uh, like 10.85 percent. Last year the loss was uh, we were still working on larger meters and things. We improved that to 3.98 percent. And then looking at January 1st to December 31st of uh, uh, 19, we had a 2.97, so we continually to get that down. And, and so we're making a lot of progress on the meter. It's not to that uh, Well, in, in 2.9% on the basis of how much gas we bought over what we sold. The based on gas price, that would be $38,575 on the what we charge for overhead for the gas department and things like that. On the revenue basis, that's $82,498. And that's at the 2.97. Right, and that was down from 2016. You know, that number was like, uh, at 16%, that was like uh, $185,403. And on a uh, purchase basis and on a retail basis, that would have been $363,000. And we were able to recover $250,000. It 
muzzle is fast. We're continuing to get better and we're continuing to watch that very close. I'm pretty sure you guys don't like the motion to move it. Go no motion to approve the purchase of gas maker. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a second? Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, seeing five aye. Aye. Opposed, seeing five aye. Motion carried. Anything else there? That's it. I want to say we appreciate your work you've done, Johnny, can verify that. We appreciate on the firing system, and I know that was a serious headache and a lot of work, and you did a great job on that. Thank you, Mr. Mark. We'll do that when we got the wrong place. I know, Mr. Carter, the, it makes a big difference on those. It uh, makes a big difference in that roller. That roller does make a big difference. It looks a whole lot better. If they stay on their bed, it's back, they can take it. Yeah. Uh, we'll remind everybody that the budget meeting, our first budget meeting, will be Tuesday the 24th, 6 p.m. We're going to have the classroom. We'll be spread out a little better. Uh, so come and we're going to let the park heads present everything, and then we'll have a discussion either after, you know, how late we run after that or another night. <coughs> so keep an open mind. You don't have to make no decisions the first night. Yeah, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Yeah. 6 o'clock on the 24th.
me giving us Bagel Mountain too. <laughs> but I'll be coming out of it too. Since you are the county commission, that's why I was addressing That's all been put on hold. It was just a dress to kind of keep everybody in the loop. There was no action taken that night in June. Okay. Uh, after our meeting last time, we had a conference call with the tip attorney, uh, Tom Green. And while we were sitting there, we were talking about adding these additional properties to the tip area, which is what we approved last meeting. Um, and the situation with David Hunt only getting the benefit from his properties and then having the other ones generate additional monies and trying to figure out how to account for that and keep up with it. He said, you can do it. He said, but really more time and trouble than it's going to be worth. So his recommendation was to go back and only make the tip area the properties that were owned by Mr. Hunt. And so since also the last meeting, Mr. Hunt was able to get options on Frankie Bell's property with the exception of his office, which is what he really wanted to add to his tip area. So between the two, we decided to pull the tip area back to just the Hunt property and make that the area. So the county commission did not have to approve the area that y'all did last meeting. Because at that point, we met with a very plain situation with them, the county mayor, and gave him maps and showed what we were doing. And so that's where we are. We have since got a letter from Mr. Hunt agreeing to pay legal fees on the tip. That's another thing that comes up with legal fee. If his property's not paying to him, then yeah. he might have had more of a problem that. Plus, today, yesterday, I got a letter uh, from Mr. Hunt that actually says, this is my project, phase one, phase two, and phase three, which we need to start the process, and now I'm in the process of starting, so I'm start on the economic impact study plan. It's what the IDB has got to approve. So that document's got to be completed. We've talked to Beverly today, we back and forth about taxes, base tax amount. We talked to her about trying to get the information on what the new taxes will be with the development. So we're working through that process, which is all part of the economic impact. So that's where we are. As soon as we get that document pulled together, Mr. Trent likes the document uh, and massages it to make sure we're legal, then we'll actually be having a public hearing before the IDB. We're just required to have two weeks notice. So I'm figuring maybe in the April we might be ready to do that. So that's the reason the county commission didn't have to act on it because we were not adding those additional properties. They had already proved it to be the hunt properties. Also, I guess you want to extend your sympathy to the mayor for the loss of the um, I know that's tough to hear that on your mind. Appreciate it.